Shove it, man! Alright, shove it, squad, it's the hawk. Just a quick video today for reasons you'll find out shortly. But now that we've reached Graceland, I need to start setting myself a new target. Now, I swore I'd never do this, but how about, I don't know, if we make 150k, I will watch AEW for a full month, including the pay-per-view. Then the Hawk can give a fair opinion once and for all. And it's win-win, you see, because if I love it, I can shave off my ridiculous haircut and grow a massive beard and finally be accepted on the internet. And if I hate it, well, a decent proportion of the Shove It squad enjoy it when I rant about modern wrestling. Seems like a fair deal. Just like when I made a girl squeal. So if Graceland was 100k, what do we call 150k when I have to dedicate time to AEW? Leave it in the comments below. Moving on, today's video is a Patreon request by two people who have both waited patiently. It's Akira's Archives and... Garrett Bischoff. Assume not the real Garrett Bischoff or I'd have to punch him in the gut. If you want to make the Hawk talk, sign up today. And of course... If you know a wrestler who can do the J-O-B to the H-J-W-K any night, any day, ha ha, shove their name in the comments, Jack. Okay, okay, season three, Ring of the Hawk, it's Satoshi Kojima. Will he make the Hawk say nah? Now a bit of perspective. I don't really know much about this guy going into this video. It's why this video has been delayed for a while. I like to try and make my videos entertaining and passionate and it's difficult to do that when I don't really know the wrestler. The other issue is that half of this run took place in Japanese wrestling companies. It's not an option to use their footage so that would make it have to go on Patreon exclusively and I just don't want to do that as I've got some other videos coming up which will be the same. So if today's video isn't for you, there is a very entertaining video coming on Monday that I'm sure will be right up your alley. This run took place in 2002 and 2003 in MLW but some of the run would also take place in Japan. Match 1, MLW World Heavyweight title, Satoshi Kojima vs Jerry Lynn, the title is currently vacant. Early MLW feels the same as ECW, most of the competitors, the arena, the referee, even down to Joey Styles on commentary. They keep trading hammerlocks and then they keep trading headlock takeovers. Kojima screams something at the crowd, no idea what he said but they seem to prefer him to Jerry Lynn. They both miss attacks now, Kojima has a rolling scent on his arsenal but he can't connect. Satoshi Kojima starts to dominate the early game with a drop toehold into an STF. Lin slides like a greased up slug around the ring and eventually makes the ropes. He used some of the grease from his hair to make the girls care. Kojima chops Lin in the corner whilst doing some Ric Flair woos. Nice to see some personality coming out here. Lin chops him back but he doesn't woo, instead he roars. Kojima fights back of a side slam for a two count. Lin's just not got going here against Kojima, he hits a vicious attack in the corner now. At this rate Lin will never grin. Vertical suplex now for another two. Satoshi makes a mistake now as he misses his second rope elbow drop. Lin wakes up and he hits three clotheslines which won't take Kojima down. He tries to slam Lin who grease slides out of it and connects with an inverted DDT. That doesn't help him much because Kojima starts hitting clotheslines in the corner and playing with the crowd. I'm impressed with the personality shown so far. Now he does manage to connect with his diving elbow drop which is just a two. Kojima removes his elbow pad now like the rock but he can't rock Lin with his elbow as he dodges and hits a German suplex. Satoshi Kojima is almost pinned for the first time. Jerry Lim with a jumping tornado DDT now for another two. More reversals now leading to a Kojima sell powerbomb which gets him a two. He picks Lin straight up but he's immediately hit with a Jerry Lin TKO. Satoshi Kojima fights out the cradle pile driver attempt and delivers a Michinoku driver for a two. Wide range of moves in this run already. Kojima hits a lariat which is his finisher and rightfully so because it finishes the match. Satoshi Kojima has won the MLW title on his debut, so not something we see that often here on Ring of the Hawk. We did see some personality, and I felt like this match was okay, it was just missing a fifth gear, so it's a B. MLW might regret giving him that belt though, because he just buggers off back to Japan for three months. He actually does defend the MLW title on Japanese soil a few times. This is a good time for me to address the usage of footage from All Japan and New Japan. You just can't show the footage from those companies on YouTube. People have lost their channels over it and they're super strict and I don't want to get hit of a brick. For those of you who are wondering, that is why the Brock Lesnar New Japan video went on Patreon. That is why China and Japan will go on Patreon and the same for Scott Hall. Shout out the Wrestling Archive for helping me with those videos. Back to Kojima's run. Unless the match is on the MLW YouTube page, I can't risk showing it for the reasons mentioned just now. Match 2, MLW Heavyweight Title. Kojima takes on Vampiro. Vamp wants to shake hands but Kojima runs away in fear. Vamp looks like he's all business here. Someone in the crowd is loudly chanting boring, but the match hasn't even started really. Kojima goes running and he knocks Vamp down and sends him out the ring. On the outside, Vamp whips Kojima into the guardrail which knocks a fan out of his chair. Someone yells ha ha. Kojima blocks his follow-up attack and suplexes him on the concrete. 
We get crowd brawling, which seems to serve absolutely no purpose other than for me to marvel at some of the creatures in the audience. We're now on a stage, Vamp scoop slams him on the wood. Vamp climbs onto the camera platform and connects with a diving clothesline, which really didn't look good, I think it was meant to look impressive. In the ring now, Vampira with a gut wrench suplex and a leg drop. This leads to a chop battle, which Vamp seems to win. He hits a big spin kick to the gut that floors Kojima for quite a long time. This match is all Vamp on the hole as he tries a lot of submissions. Finally, Satoshi Kojima lands an attack in the corner, he drops the elbow for a two count. He now has the Fujiwara armbar on for a while, which doesn't work for him. Vamp is back to dominate again and we see a Bulldog and a DDT. He keeps coming closer and closer to winning, it's a choke slam now. He completely misses his wacky dive though. Satoshi Kojima's hardly done a thing in this one, and finally he does something as he catches Vamp's Harakarana and power bombs him for a two. Kojima follows that of a net breaker. Vamp tries a kick now which is caught and he's dragon whipped. Kojima looks really happy of himself as he hits a drop kick to the knee. He seems to really zone in on the legs for a bit. Vamp's playing possum though and he almost gets the three with the small package. Drop toe hold into the STF now but Vamp quickly makes the ropes. When he gets up he's hit with the ace crusher from Kojima and then the lariat ends it. It's nothing incredible but his clothesline's pretty sweet, another B. Match 3, MLW Heavyweight title, the challenger is Johnny Smith who has a bad haircut, it looks like a loaf of Hovis. And he used to be booked as the British Bulldogs cousin back in the day. He takes on the champion Satoshi Kojima. Johnny Smith looks like he fell asleep in the 1980s and woke up in 2003. A weird tie up to start the match, then straight away Joey Styles says we'll be right back, we're going to an advert break. Great timing MLW. We come back with Kojima hitting a forearm in the corner and hitting the elbow drop. Johnny Smith looks like the sort of man you can find if you walk in any Bridgewater Bay bar on a Friday. Kojima with another two count now. Smith blocks a snap mirror attempt and connects the lariat. Johnny Smith patiently waits for him to get up as he wants another one, but he can't manage it and Kojima hits the diamond cutter. That's just two. Michinoku driver now, which Smith no sells for some reason. He's straight back up hitting a Death Valley driver. He doesn't make a pin and this is a double down. When they make it back up, Smith hits the set out power bomb. Johnny Smith is searching inside himself and after a long search he finds a German suplex. Kojima kicks out again. Suddenly Satoshi Kojima goes nuts of elbows and a clothesline. That doesn't get the job done. Johnny Smith can't get the win with the inverted DDT. He tries another which Kojima turns into a Northern Lights suplex. Argaya wants to end it with his lariat but he's caught and almost beaten by a backslide. It's irrelevant anyway because moments later Kojima wins with the lariat and that's the three. It was fine, nothing remarkable, it's a C. Match 4, final match, 5 months later, MLW heavyweight title, no DQ match, the challenger Mike Awesome, he looks like Bret Hart ate Braden Walker. No, I'm just kidding, he's still in pretty good shape here. We've got to do it because this video is short on funny, I apologise. There is a special video on Monday which I promise is a laugh a minute. He takes on the champion Kojima. Awesome's the big man here so Kojima can't knock him down. They hit chops on each other for a while before spilling out the ring. <laughs> Kojima tries to dive on him and Awesome can't be bothered to catch him and it looks like bird turd. Awesome goes running now but he's back dropped over the barriers to land on some padded chairs. This doesn't look great either. Not a great start to this one. Awesome realises it's not going well so he starts using a chair in the ring. He hits a running chair shot which I think is meant to be blocked. He's definitely blocked moments later though and Kojima now has the chair. He hits some weak looking chair shots and you can hear the crowd groaning and booing. The top rope elbow drop follows for a two. After some more clotheslines, Satoshi Kojima hits a German suplex and an inverted DDT for a two count. He can't do anything else as he's clotheslined down and hit with a set out powerbomb. Big Mike Awesome splash now which is just another two. Mike Awesome wants another dive now but he falls in his nutsack and Kojima kills him with a superplex. He doesn't kill him enough though and it's just a two. New move from Satoshi Kojima now, it's the shining wizard but that's not enough to end this one. He tries his lariat finisher which is countered with an awesome stun gun. Surprisingly now, Kojima is able to kick out the running awesome bomb. The gladiator Mike Awesome decides he must use a table now, because he does in all his matches at this point. He tries to power bomb, but Kojima tries to escape, which causes a ref bump. Just what this video is missing. Kojima hits the diamond cutter. He looks confused for a second before hitting his lariat. He makes the cover, but no ref. Mike Awesome spears him whilst he's taking his half the ball. And there it is, awesome bomb through the table. That's the end of the match. Why did everyone want me to watch this? I mean, it's fine, but it's not anything to write to your girlfriend about. He's a good in-ring wrestler, but that's about it. I felt like he showed more personality in the first match, and then it was all gone by the end. I know it's a hard one for me to judge, because he wasn't a regular in the US. His final match is a B for taking the table spot.
Satoshi Kojima spent most of his career wrestling in Japan, but he did spend a short amount of time in TNA a few years ago, which would also qualify for Ring of the Hawk. But looking at the wrestlers he faced during his time there, screw that, I'd rather eat a brick until I was sick. So a hard one to judge, because he wasn't exactly out there cutting promos and being involved in the storylines on a weekly basis. He was just a random champion who got MLW some needed exposure when he kept defending the belt in Japan. And I can't show you that because my channel will be nuked. And you might say, don't make this video then. Look, I've put this video off for a really long time and I always try to find a way to make my Patreon request work even if it's not perfect, because I appreciate all the support I get on there. Admittedly, I was kind of bored at times during this video, but I don't think it helped that I didn't really know who he was, so I wasn't really invested in him. No storyline, no character, no manager, he was just a guy who did clotheslines and was pretty successful at doing them. The matches were all decent to good. As I said, I don't know him from Jack and I've tried to have a crack, but turning turd into gold isn't my knack, so give me a smack. Kojima can have a final grade for Ring of the Hawk Season 3 of a C, and I'll smack you one if you don't agree. 